Disclaimer. The content presented in this video is of a spiritual nature and reflects my personal beliefs and experiences. I want to emphasize that viewers are not obligated to accept or believe anything shared in this testimony. This testimony is based solely on my individual relationship with God and viewers are encouraged to interpret and discern the information presented according to their own beliefs and convictions. Thank you. I had a dream this morning and in the dream, we was at this uh, huge church. Uh, it was very big. Uh, it reminds me of uh, a church by the size of T.D. Jakes, Bishop T.D. Jakes or, you know, um, a mega church kind of a setting. And inside the church was every background, every nationality of people. And and what seemed to be going on was there was invited uh, a very famous preacher. Um, in the dream, I wasn't sure in the beginning if the preacher was something that the people wanted or if it was a, someone that God actually sent to help the church at large. And what seemed to be at this time, uh, the amount of people that was in the building represented the nations because there was so many uh, different nationalities of people in one setting, and that's normally uncommon uh, in one church setting. And so this specific preacher, he would go around the church and I would follow behind him and I watched him go to so many different people. And when he began to go and stand by certain people, he would stand there and the people would just bust out laughing and, and doing weird, strange things that was very weird. And so I just began to keep following behind him and I was just watching how uh, the people were responding to him and and just all of the strangeness that was happening at the same time. And he would just stand by people and the people would just do weird stuff, rather if it's, you know, snake and shake and uh, start laughing. <laughs> just start laughing out of nowhere and I was just like, uh-uh, something, something is just not right. And it just, it wouldn't settle at all in my spirit and at the time I couldn't tell what it was uh, but I could sense that something was off and as I was following behind him and he had a massive crowd that was following around him as if you would see in a de deliverance service how people would crowd around the speaker you know just to see if anybody needed to be called or just to help any kind of way that's how this person was surrounded there was so many people surrounding him and the, per the place was packed and as he began to just go by each person that he was going to uh, out of nowhere I heard a loud voice scream in every direction and it said Kundalini. Kundalini and it terrified me because I was like wait where is that coming from and every direction I turned I kept see, kept hearing the word Kundalini 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 spirit it's a Kundalini spirit and when I heard it I was just I was like oh no oh no oh no God and I was watching the people, how they were praising him. And, and because of his accolades, his name and his status, they were praising him. They was parading him. And they had no idea that the church was being invaded. They was shouting his name. And because of his gifts of, of what, what they heard that he could do and all these things, they had no idea that they were being invaded by another spirit. So as I began to follow behind him, I saw a specific woman of God, and I won't mention her name for protection. Um, I, and I saw this specific woman of God that I knew my entire childhood, especially when it came down to the prophetic, because she helped me in a lot of areas. I saw her gathered with many other women in the front right of the church. And she was watching it, and when I saw her face, and she was like, she had this expression on her face that something is wrong, something's not right. And when I saw her facial expression looking disturbed, I knew exactly that something was off and I wasn't crazy. And when I looked at her and I said, Kundalini, and when I said that, all the women with her and her included pointed at me and said, yes, that's what it is, it's a Kundalini spirit. And I was like, I was in awe. And she looked at me and these words came to me from her. When I looked into her eyes, she said, now that you know this, 
what are you going to do about it? And I immediately cried out to God in the dream because I'm like, Lord, I'm just a little bit old Memphis boy. And this is a humongous church. I don't have no influence here. How, how, I don't have a microphone. They're not here because of, uh, of an influence that I have done or anything. Lord, how am I going to be able to do or speak in such a place with it when this specific uh, person, uh, a preacher, is he has all of this influence and it's such a massive distraction. Nobody's going to pay attention to me. And so I, I was asking God what to do. And so he led me to certain people to pray. He said, go to this person and pray. And every single person I went to, to pray, uh, they would say this specific saying, yes, you can pray for me. I need that favor in my life. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And so I began to pray for this person and pray for that person and pray for this person. And while this man of God is going by everybody and they're just doing weird, I don't know what's being transferred. You know, uh, I just knew that it was not of the right spirit. And so I began, the Lord said, go and speak to this specific woman in the, right, in the left corner of the church. So I went over there and I said, hey, the Lord wanted me to pray for you. And she said, oh, absolutely, you can pray for me. She said, hold on, um, I need that kind of favor in my life. And I was like, there you go again, that kind of favor. And so she had a whole bunch of stuff in her hand. And in my heart, I'm discouraged because if I go by this rate of only speaking to one person like this, I'm going to lose so many people. So many people are going to be affected. And so I pray, I said, Lord, I don't know what to do. I don't have a microphone. I don't know how to, I, Lord, Lord, I don't know what to do in this kind of situation. And the woman that I was beginning to pray for, she had a whole bunch of clothes and things in her hand. And she said, hey, let me go put this on the seat and I'm going to come back so you can pray for me. And so when she threw all her stuff on the seat, I realized there was a microphone underneath it all. And when she picked up the microphone from her hand, and as she threw all the stuff out of her hand, she picked up the microphone and she began to speak out loud. She said, hey, you guys, Mr. Rod is going to pray for me. So I, I need your encouragement. You know, I, I, I need your you know, assistance. And when she said that, I literally watched God turn the influence from the speaker that came. His entire influence was literally snatched and given over to me. I watched how everybody that was going crazy over this speaker who was in this this kundalini spirit or this uh, this other spirit i watched them turn their attention from him and now faced it toward me and she began to walk toward me with the microphone and i'm in terror because this moment has the power to destroy everything if i do if i use it wrong and so i'm terrified lord please Give me what to say. Give me what to do. You're the one that's preparing me and telling me to do these things. Please teach me at, the, at this very moment what I should do because I don't know what to say. I don't know what to do. And so as she got me the microphone, I grabbed it and uh, I began to pray. And I could sense the spirit of God so close and his, his presence was so strong on me that I began to pray. And I said, Father. I said, Father, I join my faith with theirs and theirs with mine, that we may be able to pray to you as one voice. And as I began to say that, it was an elect electrifying chill that went across the entire room, that people would begin to say, ooh, like they could feel, they could feel the chills hit the entire room, like everybody could feel the presence of God just suddenly hit the place. And some kind of way, there was a musician playing, but I had no idea where he was. And it was a perfect sound of strings. There was a perfect worship that would hit the atmosphere. And it was so powerful. People began to open their hearts and to allow God to come in and speak what he wants. And out of nowhere, I heard what seemed to be a radio transmitter sending information from one person over to uh, the musician. And I listened before I began to pray for this woman to God. I listened and the, the voice on the other end of the radio transmitter said, cut off the music. Cut the music off. Immediately when the musician heard this, fear striked his heart because he felt like he was being, he was being forced to now interrupt what God was doing 
because of an agenda that was on the other side of that radio transmitter. Whoever was on the other side of that transmitter did not want the things of God to go forth. And so what they did was jeopardize it and plan an attack to cut off any way God was communicating with his church. So because of fear, the musician cut off the music. He stopped the worship and immediately the church was impacted quickly because of the absence of the music. And so I, I spoke through the microphone. I said, hey, musician, it would be beautiful if you play. He was so afraid to talk that God allowed me to hear his heart. And his heart said, I want to bring the music back, but they told me to cut it off. And I said again, musician, it would be very good that you play. And the musician said, I want to so bad, but they told me to cut it off. And tear, you can hear that there was tears in his eyes as he was saying it because he was in sudden fear because of who he was under. Uh, and he was afraid of what they're going to do to him if he did not listen to them. And, so, and I, so I gave him a prophetic word. I said, the acceleration of how quickly your grandmother heals is based off of your obedience to God right now. And he, he, you can tell, I finally found out what he was because how loud his, how loud his cry was when he realized that God was talking about his grandmother that he'd been praying for to be healed because she was in a very bad state. And so when he heard that word from God, he fell to the floor with a loud voice crying out to God and I heard him where I was standing. Because of his fear to the person on the other side of the radio transmitter, he did not obey God. And so right before I turned back to the lady, I looked at her and I said, this is what the Lord says to you. And right before I spoke a word, I woke up out the dream. I cried out to God. I said, Lord, what is happening? What is going on? And the Lord began to speak to me and say, son, the church has been invaded by another spirit. And he said, there is a Kundalini spirit that has entered the church by way of desiring powers outside of the origin of how I created it to be. And the Lord says, son, look at the people. Look at how they praise this preacher. Look at how they parade who he is and have no idea that the same person they're parading is the same person that has been sent to invade the church at large. And they have no idea that what they're celebrating was sent to kill them. And I believe that we are in a time and a season where there are people who are desiring signs rather than the sun. For the Bible says that only an adulterous generation will seek a sign, but the only sign that will be given to them is the sign of Jonah. We have become a people that has been so mesmerized by miracles that you hardly hear about Jesus anymore. And so now, therefore, we celebrate people who are gifted and who can do things that we've never seen before, even at the expense of them not even being sent from God. And what is amazing is a direct translation of the word kundalini is serpent power. And some biblical translation call this spirit of divination the snake spirit or a pythonical spirit or a spirit of python. As some would say, is related to yoga, accompanied by meditation, chanting, and etc. They even conclude to say this is the way to supernatural power and divinity. Another spirit. This is what the Lord says. The church at large is being invaded by another spirit. And if you are not careful, you will celebrate what's been sent to destroy you. The church was parading the very person who was sent to invade. This is what the Lord says. Get rid of the idols that we worship rather is people, places, or things. God is a jealous God. He would not settle for anything to take his glory or his children's attention. The enemy's duration of influence will last as long as it would take for you to take your place in the kingdom. False prophets occupy empty seats. 
They build their platform off of signs and not the sun. Do you know your seat is available when you don't sit? And it began to speak to me, watch who you allow to confiscate your attention. The enemy is coming to mute your obedience, but no weapon formed against us and you shall prosper. Don't think it's strange when you are attacked and ridiculed suddenly. There are devils that's coming to attack your worship, attack your revelation, attack your dreams, attack your focus, attack your business, attack your consistency, but God will protect those that trust him. And this is what the Lord began to speak to me. He said, son, there are so many things under the rug that don't desire for you to stand on it. You notice that when I began to pray for the specific woman of God, the enemy sent someone to attack the worship. His goal was to stop God from doing anything that could cause change or transformation within the body. The Lord said to me, he said, son, cry out for miracles for 30 days because the church is in need of an emergency exit. We are in a time and a season where we have to be careful who we allow to lay hands on us. The Bible says lay hands on no man suddenly. There are people in the faith right now who have come that has been sent and there are people who are in the gospel who have went, who have studied the art of the gospel. We have people who look just like us, who do things just like us. They, they try to lift up God just like us. They mock and imitate the language to win over the influence of the people. And if you're not careful, you will be led away by another spirit and believing that it is God the whole time. This is the word of the Lord for the church. Be blessed.